Hi, everybody. It's Marcus Collins from MA Properties. I've just finished up the single family and condominium market updates for the first half of 2024. I added a section with it that talking about the potential impact of the multifamily home developments that we're going to see in Lexington over the next few years. And I thought it'd be useful to kind of carve that out of that video and make it as a separate video if this is something that interests you. Um, and so I just want to replay that for you right now. So hope you enjoy it. So I want to turn my attention, or your attention, my attention to um, something we've not covered in a presentation before. We've thought a lot about it, but not really articulated um, our thoughts today. And this specifically on the impact of the multifamily developments that we are seeing coming on stream in Lexington over the next few years. Um, for those of you who have not kind of followed this and not watching this, um, there are a large number of current, well, I should say, excuse me, going back, I don't want to go back, but um, for multifamily development, read condo developments, right? So clearly that's what they mean when they say multifamily developments and multifamily zoning. Actually, what we're meaning in this is, in many cases, condominium complexes. So these are, as you go to the, uh, the Lexington Planning Board website, these are the current projects. Um, and some of these numbers are quite large. Um, if you look at 329 Concord, 200 units. Piper Road, 59 units. Pleasant Street, 100. Merriam Edgewood, 11. And so it goes on. Bedford Street, 30. A couple of unknowns right now. One is 475 Bedford Street. That's the tennis club. Um, there's some question about whether that's going to be residential or whether it's going to be commercial. So there's a question over that. None will tell. And also the, the recent um, announcement of a affordable unit development on the intersection of North Street and Lowell Street. I don't know how big those are going to be, even if they happen. Of course, um, at least in terms of Bedford Street, I don't know how big those are going to be. But it looks like if you kind of add up the numbers, that we could end up with over 400 units coming on stream sometime in that kind of two to three year time frame. That's a large number of units. Um, when you think about it, it's a relatively large. And if, if you kind of put it in the context of condominiums, because the vast majority, in fact, all of these are going to be condominiums, there are about 2,000 condominiums right now in Lexington. This could easily increase those to by 500, perhaps even more. And that's a big, that's a step increase in the number of condominiums coming on stream and actually within the town. And, and it's worthwhile asking what's the impact of that going to be? So let's see. Um, so the first impact, and, and I, I kind of put this slide in because I just, as many of you have, have received in the mail, the community report from the Lexington Public Schools. And I thought, well, so imagine these homes come on stream. What's the impact going to be on the school system? So the US Census data tells us that there's about 1.9, there is 1.94 children per family on average in the United States today. That's 2023 data. Multiplying the 425 condominiums by 1.94, of course, you get 820 additional children. That's clearly a very large number of additional children coming into the school system. What I thought was interesting in the community report was kind of buried on the, almost the last page of the report. It said, working with the town of Lexington, LPS will continue to monitor local multifamily zoning changes. Yep, all of which remain a consideration for longer-term planning. And I'm not sure that longer-term planning is the, is the term I would have used. Um, but I'm not an expert on the school system. I'm going to focus instead on real estate. But I think this is something that we need to keep an eye on because I do think that units will be coming on stream faster than people anticipate. Now, there's a couple of mitigation factors, and I'll go into that in a moment, but I still think we do need to think seriously about what the impact of, of these, these additional homes is going to be on all, all facets of the town, actually, for that matter. But let me focus on real, on real estate. That's my area of expertise, so let me focus on. So first thing I wanted to look at, really, is okay, how many home sales do we anticipate in that 2025-2026 time frame? Now, you saw this graph before, at least similar one. Um, 
This is a combination of single family economies, essentially all home sales in Lexington, um, planned out oh, since 2014. So over the last decade or just a decade, blue is existing homes, green is new construction, and then this kind of orange color is the off-market teardown. So there are homes which are torn down, what off-market, torn down, and then converted into new construction. So uh, that's the data. Um, looking at it as similar, single family was similar to condominium in that we anticipate fewer sales in 24 versus 23. And you can see that data there with my full year 2024 projection running at about 310, 20 on sets. Now, if we are to believe the Mortgage Backed Association, I guess we have no option but to, um, we uh, expect that as interest rates decline, show that kind of downward trend, so the number of home sales will increase. Sellers we will think, okay, finally, I can see a downward trend. I, I'm willing to move out of my existing 3.5% mortgage into a higher mortgage, maybe 6.5%, knowing I can, uh, over time, refinance that, but get out of the home which doesn't fit your requirements. It's too big, it's too small, whatever it may be, today. And there's kind of two schools of thought on this one. One says there'll be a gradual increase in the number of sellers coming on the market as interest rates slowly but methodically decline. If interest rates drop quickly, I will tell if that happens, of course. The other school of thought is that there are an awful lot of sellers right now who really want to move. And so once we reach that tipping point, I guess you would call it, um, those sellers are going to put their home on the market because they want to move. And so we'll have not a gradual increase in the number of homes coming on, but a more dramatic increase, if you will, in terms of the, the, the number of homes coming on the market. Now, I don't think today we can make a judgment between each of those two scenarios. I mean, it really does depend on the rate of change of the mortgage interest rate. We have no insight into that realistically. We may come the end of the year once the, the election's out of the way, but I think it really realistically will be in 2025 before we can get a sense of where we think uh, that interest rate or what the rate of change of those uh, mortgage interest rates is going to be. So. For this analysis, I've chosen a more conservative approach, one where we've got a gradual increase in the number of homes coming on the market. Uh, let me explain a little bit about where I got 350 and 400 from. Um, if you go back to 2016 and 2017, we see that as the norm, if you will. Pre-COVID, um, after the recession, it was the time at which the market was kind of in equilibrium, a, a balanced market, if you will. Still, Lexington is a popular town, still somewhat of a seller's market, but not um, swayed, not influenced, disrupted by, be it the uh, downturn, the, the economic downturn, or the economic crash, not COVID and so on. Um, 18 and 19 were impacted by discussion around an economic downturn. COVID put pay to that. That was 2020, 20, 2021, and to some extent, 22. So that 16 and 17, we see as the norm, if you will. Um, and so I'm expecting home sales to begin to approach that normal. That normal, by the way, is about 450 in that kind of 26, 27 time frame. So I've been somewhat conservative about 2026 not returning to normal because interest rates will not have done that. Um, and so I anticipate that 450 sales will be further out, maybe 2027, maybe 2028. Clearly, I can't see that far. Um, but so I've been somewhat conservative in terms of my projections for 25 and 2026, just to kind of put some perspective to those numbers or some justification to those numbers. So now let's layer on top of this the multifamily developments as they come on strip. So I've used 150 a year in 25, 26, moving forward. I have to give you 27, 28, but, but you get the idea. Um, so it looks like if we, if they all sell, we will be 
at about in 24 five, we'll be at about the same number we were during COVID. Hmm. Not sure about that, but let's kind of play this out anyway. And then as we get to 2026, that's more home sales than we've frankly ever seen. We've been tracking this data for a long time and that 550 home sales is higher than we'd seen. So the question really becomes twofold. First of all, can Lexington accommodate this number of new homes? This question. Second question is, what will the impact of that be? Uh, it's difficult, as you can imagine, to give definitive on what the impact will be. It's much simpler says, um, to give you a sense of where that impact will be. What will it impact? Quite how it will impact depends clearly on how many homes are sold, um, where interest rates go, how many, how quickly these developments come on street, and so on. So let's focus you know, a little bit more here on where we think the impact of these larger number of homes. This is not four or five homes coming on a year. This is not even 20 homes coming on a year. You know, we're talking of the order of 150 homes a year coming on street. So what will be the impact on the existing housing market? So first area that I feel will be impact is the residential rental market. What you see here is the rental market in Lexington, the number of homes that are renting. 2024 is a year to date, so you know, ignoring that, looks like we're just shy of 200 rentals per year. I should add that this does not include the two Avalon developments. And we know that there are a large number of people in those developments that would like to buy in the town but can't because the homes don't exist, the homes at the right price point don't exist. Um, and so I think it's fair to say, if I was marketing these developments, one of the key markets I would be, be focused on is those um, people in Lexington who are currently renting, be it in Avalon or be it the residential market. So it will take a, it will impact this, and I think quite sizably too, because this is a ready-made group of people who can move really quickly. Remember, they're not constrained by mortgage interest rates of 3.5%. They don't have a mortgage. They could move relatively quickly. Um, and so this is a ready-made market. Now, the beauty of this, of this market being the, the, the who moves into these new developments, is of course, this doesn't necessarily have a large impact on the services of the town because these people are already in the town. They're already in the school system and so on. So the beauty of this group is that, so they don't necessarily have as big an impact on the services within the town. So I think this, this, is, a, this is going to be one source of the bias for units. So let's look now at um, the single family and the condominium markets and ask ourselves, so, okay, will, it, will they impact those markets? So this is, uh, most of you will have seen if you've watched presentations done, a uh, sell price distribution. I actually have those in a moment. This is the floor area distribution. That is, um, what's the distribution of floor areas of homes, that's condominiums, in this case, in single family, in the next slide, condominiums, that are sold, in this case, in 2023, because I want a full year's worth of data. So this is 2023 data. What is the distribution of floor areas um, for homes. So, so for existing homes, there's almost none under a thousand square feet. So, you know, the idea of building one bedroom apartments in Lexington just doesn't make sense. Um, given that, the vast majority of people who move into the town are looking for more than a one bedroom development. Um, and so, the, uh, most of the existing homes are in that kind of 1,000 to 3,000 square foot range. And that's exactly where the majority of these developments are probably get to be built. Um, so if you look further, further out in terms of square footage, that's where you see the new construction kick in. That's the green in this bar. It will have almost no impact on that because they're simply too big and too expensive. These condos are going to be built um, at, a, at a smaller footprint, therefore a smaller price point, and will have not as much impact on the existing large homes in the town and new construction market in the town. Mm. 
if I look now at condominiums, um, not as many much data, of course, because there are far fewer condominium sales than there are single family sales in the town. Um, but you can see the majority of condominiums are in that kind of thousand square feet, some, not many, in the 2,000 square feet. Um, so the smaller units that are built will have a direct impact on the existing condominium market. So um, if you're in a thousand, somewhere between a thousand and two thousand square feet, you will be you will be impacted by these additional units being built. If we now turn our attention to price, same idea here, sale price distribution, you can see that there are almost no home sales in Lexington under a million dollars. Uh, they should be out. It's in the teens, actually, single family. Um, and the majority are in that one to two million. That's where the majority of home sales are. Surprising. The average is two million dollars, remember, um, for a um, single family. And so that's exactly where these condominiums are going to be developed in terms of price point um, in that kind of one to two million. So it'll have, a, again, uh, an impact on the existing home specifically the somewhat smaller, therefore less expensive homes in Lexington. So I expect that to be where the impact is um, because they're going to directly compete with existing homes in that kind of price range. Um, in terms of the condominium market, a little, a little, not quite as, as simple, um, given that there are a considerable number of, there's, there's more condominium sales for less than a million than there are single family. Um, so the question is, will those actually be impacted? The likes of Black Lane, Drum Boy, and, and Porta Pond, and so on. What impact will it have on those? And on the face of it, probably not as much, because building 700,000 700, price point condominiums may well not be the sweet spot for the condos that are developed. We don't have that much insight into the size and so on and price today. We will have moving forward, of course. But there is something here that is important in that many of those older condominium complexes are beginning to show their age and actually have higher than normal condominium fees. The new condominiums that are being built, perhaps they're a little more expensive, but their condominium fees may well be cheaper. So, you know, do you do you buy a unit that's a little more expensive? But save two, three hundred dollars a month on your condominium fee and put that to the mortgage. And so it may well be, uh, depending on how these play out and the, the kind of facilities and therefore the condo fees they offer, whether we will see buyers choosing to prefer a slightly more expensive but with a slightly lower condo fee unit versus the existing condos that are up are, are are today. So it's likely that, that there will still be impact on those multi on the existing condominiums in, in Lexington. So that's kind of where, where we are right now with the impact of this multifamily development. There's lots to unpick here, clearly, lots to unpack, um, lots more analysis to be done. But I did want to kind of bring to your attention where we're thinking is today, It'll solidify as we move forward to the rest of 24 and into 25. But I want to kind of show you where our thinking is today so that you'll understand when we kind of add more detail to this moving forward, you know, where, where we are. As it were. So hopefully you enjoyed that. A um, lot of information there. Something to think about, I think. I think it's fair to say that this is uh, something, as I said in the, in the, in the video, we're going to be looking at moving forward. If you have uh, any questions on this, the information I have, more than willing to share, more than willing to answer any questions that you may have on it. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you enjoyed this one, then go take a look at the Lexington single family and condominium, whichever is appropriate to you, uh, market update as well. There's lots of information about what's happening in the market. So with that, I'll say thanks for watching and bye.